thank you, uh, Commissioner, for, for joining us. Um, I realize you're brand new, uh, so please don't take any of the comments that I'm going to give you personally, but I have to express the frustration mm -hmm. of the disability community. Okay. New York probably has one of the best programs in the country. It's nowhere near meeting the needs of the people with disabilities. Nowhere at all. Um, I, I talk to people. Um, I, uh, I, I see how you have to, I see what it's like to try to navigate the system. I'm a legislator, have been for years. I'm an attorney. My wife was the head of Putnam ARC and is on the board of WARC. And we're frustrated with trying to get anything done. So if you have the expertise that we do, what happens to the person who's just walking the street and doesn't have any of this, what are they facing? Well, I hear from them over and over and over again how they believe the state has failed. So we all agree with your goals, and I appreciate your comments about being person-centered and family-centered and providing people with individual choice, because today they don't have the choice. And I'm very concerned in a budget with a budget that decreases monies when we have more people to serve. You have an epidemic in the autism area, but I don't want to see money taken away from the other disabilities to address the kids and the adults with autism. And when you have more and more people being served with less and less money, how could you provide the services that need to be provided when we're not meeting those needs today? Now, I applaud your attempt to restructure. I applaud your attempt to try to make things more efficient. But when you're dealing with a community that needs services, it's very hard to cut. I mean, I look at this, and, and when you talk about access to services, the question of Medicaid waiver. People can't get the Medicaid waiver. They're told there's an 18-month, two-year wait, and you have to do it by a certain age. So I'd like you to address that issue, but I want to make my, my statement first if I can. Okay. And I look and I but see, time is seven minutes I understand, Mr. Chairman. I, I, maybe in this case it's more important for me to make this, the comments rather than ask the questions. Mm -hmm. Because I understand you're new and you might not be able to address some of these. Uh, but I'm looking here and I'm seeing that, that there's a cutback, $40 million cutback for residential options. We have a waiting list, a long waiting list for people to get into residential facilities. And parents are dying. What's happening to those kids? I've seen situations where there were emergencies that Westchester County's had to deal with because the parents are, are too old or no longer around able to take care of their kids even though they want to. There are no transition programs. People are aging out. Where do they go when they get to be 21 and they're no longer in school? Um, we have no programs to train emergency responders. As the kids are getting older and you have more and more people with disabilities, particularly in the autism field, these kids go into doctor's offices and doctors don't recognize the signs of autism. So how do you expect a policeman or a fireman in the emergency situation to recognize that? The state is, from what I can see, doing nothing to, to reach out and train emergency responders. And now we're talking about cutting the monies we're giving to providers. And this is such a geographical problem. Down where we are in Westchester County, and I assume the same thing in, in New York City, you can't get providers to stay in the field because we're not paying them enough. And now we're going to cut back more. And then you go upstate New York, they don't have any providers at all because of the geography. It's not a field where you can make, make enough money, so why would anybody with these skills want to move into those communities? So you're coming into a, a position where what I am seeing is a failing system. And I'm hoping this is not a roadmap uh, to disaster. I'm hoping that you can bring us back out of this. I don't know how you're going to do it with so much less money. But these are some of the concerns that I've heard from the disability community. I haven't given you much time, but please comment. Well, you said quite a bit there, Assemblyman. Um, just a few comments, because I know for time, I, I, I won't probably touch on all of the points you've made. Um, first of all, I'd just like to say, in terms of our, of our Home and Community-Based Services Waiver Program, we have we spend three and a half, almost three, more than three times more than any other state in the country in terms of home and community-based waiver services. Uh, we have the second most people that we support through the home and community-based services waiver. We also, half of those individuals, by the way, are folks under the age of 22. So more than half of the people we support in our waiver are folks who are 
who are school age or younger. So um, I think it's a, it's a somewhat of a, um, I won't say a myth because it's not because you're feeling this exactly in West, in, I think it's Westchester County you mentioned. There's no prohibition on enrolling kids in the waiver. Um, now, you said that there's a two-year wait list. I, I am not familiar with that. Um, we have resources to help uh, families and to help individuals as they age out of school programs. We have resources to help. So I'm not, I, I, I would like to take that offline and maybe talk to you about yep. that because there, there are resources available to help with some of those situations that you uh, described. I think the other thing is um, in terms of first responders, one of the things as, and one of the initiatives we have as part of our autism uh, platform is really to develop first responders training, uh, a training program, which we know is, is, def is, is, is really needed uh, around the state. So we've got some activity going on. It's focused on, on folks with autism, but the point is that that kind of training could dovetail nicely with people with other disabilities. So we want to build off of that. We know that's critical in supporting people with developmental disabilities, that first responders know what they're getting into when they come to into a situation to deal with whatever uh, the situation may be from an emergency <coughs> perspective. Um, the other point you raise about not having enough providers, I think that there may be pockets of that in our system, but we have about 800 providers that, that provide some form of supports and services uh, in our system. Now that's not to say that not, there's not pockets in communities where there may be a single provider. That does happen at times, but for the most part, we have, we have in a, people would say, an abundance of providers. Um, so I, I don't think that that's a huge problem. However, as uh, Chairman Ortiz raised, the issue of making sure we've got culturally sensitive um, and we're meeting the needs of individuals, the diverse backgrounds of folks, that we make, have to make sure that we're covering those. So, thank you. I appreciate your responses. Um, I'm not sure the disability community would agree that we're there. What you're right. saying to us is more of a goal. Because I have heard from parents from upstate New York who say that they can't find the providers. And when I talk to the providers in Westchester County, they're saying they haven't had an increase in rate in eight years. They took a 10% cut last year, and they're expected to take another 10% cut this year. And when you're in a very expensive community like Westchester County, people have options. They can do something else. They can move and provide services somewhere else or in another part of the system that pays more than the parts of the system where we need these people today. But I appreciate your, your response and your paying attention, and I do hope we can work together uh, over the next few months. Okay. Thank you.